Book of Genesis, chapter 11. The Tower of Babel. Now the, old, the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language. And this is the on only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing they, that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down there and there confuse their language, so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. Shem's Descendants These are the generations of Shem. When Shem was 100 years old, he fathered Arpachshad, two years after the flood. And Shem lived after he fathered Arpachshad 500 years and had other sons and daughters. When Arpachshad had lived 35 years, he fathered Shelah. And Arpachshad lived after he fathered Shelah 403 years and had other sons and daughters. When Shelah had lived 30 years, he fathered Eber. And Shelah lived after he fathered Eber 403 years and had other sons and daughters. When Eber had lived 35 years, he fathered Peleg. And Eber lived after he fathered Peleg 430 years and had other sons and daughters. When Peleg had lived 30 years, he fathered Ru, and Peleg lived after he fathered Ru 209 years, and had other sons and daughters. When Ru had lived 32 years, he fathered Sarag, and Ru lived after he fathered Sarag 207 years, and had other sons and daughters. When Sarag had lived 30 years, he fathered Nahor, and Sarag lived after he fathered Nahor 200 years, and had other sons and daughters. When Nahor had lived 29 years, he fathered Terah. Nahor lived after he fathered Terah 119 years, and had other sons and daughters. When Terah had lived 70 years, he fathered Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Terah's Descendants Now these are the generations of Terah. Terah fathered Abram, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran fathered, a lot, fathered Lot. Haran died in the presence of his father Terah in the land of his kindred, in Ur of the Chaldeans. And Abram and Nahor took wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife, Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah and Iscah. Now Sarai was barren. She had no child. Terah took Abram, his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, his grandson, and Sarai, his daughter-in-law, his son, Abram's wife. And they went forth together from Ur of the Chaldeans to go into the land of Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. The days of terror were 205 years, and terror died in Haran. So, this goes over the story of Babel. The, uh, the famous, well-known Tower of Babel story. And in that story, we're told about man's hubris, man's pride. How man wanted to reach the heavens. And they wanted to have a tower that could reach the heavens so they could make a name for themselves. Now, as is very evident, the Lord did not like this. He didn't very much, almost cautionary in a way, he took a cautious step to stop this. Because he understood that if man was capable of communicating together to create this idea of building a tower that reaches the heavens then there's a lot more damage that could be done if the wrong people came together and communicated in that way i suppose it's sort of a cautionary tale also of our pride because it like it goes into detail in this i believe in like a there's like a few books, right? I think it was in Proverbs that it was said that 
God does not like the prideful. God despises the prideful. So, this shows us that when we have pride, God will make sure that that pride doesn't really amount to much. And that's very good because pride is a sin. So, besides, you know, the story of Babel, the rest just goes into all the descendants of Shem and then the descendants of Terah. So, again, going back to how after the flood, it was... Hold on. Sorry, low battery warning. So, this goes back to how after the flood, Noah's descendants populate the earth. So... Yeah, that's pretty much everything that I can find to say about... No, no, don't walk on this. So that's pretty much everything that I can find in this. What's on your, what's on your whisker? Right. What is that? Right. Sorry, sorry. Just got to take care of this little one. So yeah, uh, Genesis chapter 11 gives us the story of Babel and goes back into detail about the repopulation of the earth after the flood. So that's everything I have to say today. Keep running when no one else is and have a blessed day.